We're in the Isle Enemy mood and uh, we're, we're building it up uh, ahead of the big match uh, tonight at Hamden. So, Paul Coit has called in his connections. Who have you got for us? Well, I tell you who I've got. I've gone in, so 150th anniversary then of England versus Scotland. Um, so that's tonight. The 100th anniversary game then obviously was 50 years ago. Man that played in that game and also played more games for England than anybody else. More caps what do you, what do you, than anybody what do you mean? else. He played 50 years ago. He did play what 50 years ago. What age is he? 190? Or what, what, what? Well, you know what? It's actually his birthday on Sunday. What? Well, he must have been like five. I think he probably was. During, he still looks the game. same. Who Should is it? Hello, the great Peter Shotton. <laughs> Morning, Peter. Happy, see, happy birthday Morning, for Sunday. Paul. I was in Morning, forget, Morning, man. Morning, Chilts. Very good to see you. What do you remember about... Thank you. Isle enemy games. What do you remember about them? I mean, were, were they were they vicious? Were they competitive, to say the least? Uh, both of those, I think. It was. Uh, they're incredible matches to play in. Um, you know, in, in that era, especially because there was obviously the terracing, and you'd get you know sometimes a hundred thousand at Hamden, and and uh, a lot of British players at clubs then, and the atmosphere. You know, if you lost the game. You'd, you'd take stick for th throughout the season until you played them again. So there was always a lot riding on it. Peter, do you, do you think that maybe the feeling is not there that it used to be? Because we were saying earlier it was it was always the game on TV, was it? We used to get the FA Cup final at England-Scotland every year and everybody waited for those games. So now do you think it do might you have think it, Do you think it bit? matters more to Scotland than England? Oh, I, I think so. I don't know about you, Peter. Um... Well, no, I mean, it, it was always a big game for the English lads as well, you know, but uh, I think it was just the era, you know, you'd got a lot of British players at clubs and uh, now obviously there's a lot more foreign players in, but certainly for the fans, there's always a lot of rivalry there, definitely. Peter, who did you, you know, see in front of your goals in your six-yard area or whatever that you thought, danger, danger man? Uh well, uh, quite a few, actually. But, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, I remember in 73, I just got in the England team and it was at Wembley and we were winning 1-0 with 10 minutes to go. And I remember Kenny Dalgleish, great Scotland striker. Uh, oh, you've got the picture of the save. And I managed to get across and palm it away. And, uh, you know, we won 1-0. And, and, you know, we got great players like Bobby Moore in that match. So it really cemented me in the England team. But I think Dalgleish was certainly one of uh, Scotland's great strikers. And uh, uh, funny enough, um, you know, Ali McCoy still used to uh, get a few chances when I played against him. Ali McCoy was very good looking when he was young. You know, he, he even appeared in films. Did he really? He did. What's happened then? He just doesn't seem to have it anymore. <laughs> do you, Ali? <laughs> I've got to say, 73, though, 73, that, that game, and it was known and still is, Peter, and I think everybody north of the border would like to forget it, the St Valentine's Day Massacre, wasn't it? And I know it was Bobby Moore's 100th uh, appearance as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was, it was, it's always great to beat them at Wembley, but the, uh, the Hamden games were, were special as well, you know, and... Uh, uh, over the years, you know, without sounding big-headed, I, I had some cr pretty good games against Scotland. Eleven? Um, it was eleven? And, uh, eleven games, yeah. Uh, always fantastic. Especially at Wembley. You used to go on the coach to the game and uh, you'd go past some of the uh, public houses or pubs on the way and, of course, there was a mass of Scottish fans there with the kilts on, come down from Scotland the day before... And as our team coach go by, they'd all do moonies and things like that. So uh, it, it was quite funny at the time. You know, they were, they were just so against the England team. Did you do them back, though, Peter? This is the thing. I don't think you get away with it these days, but <laughs> would you do them back again out, no, the, out the coach window? No, I think, yeah, we were quite, di we were quite diplomatic. Of course yeah. you were. So, Peter, what way do you see the game uh, going tonight? It's billed as a... Uh, a friendly um, uh, England fresh out against um, Ukraine the other day. It was a pretty pretty ordinary draw, I thought that really was. Mm -hmm. But Scotland, as you were saying, Paul, earlier, playing very well. They are. Five on the trot. One five yeah. on the trot. It's going to be it's yeah. not be a walkover for anybody. How do you see it, Peter? Um, I, th I think England are, are a better team, but I think you're right. Scotland are, uh, you know, they've got the, uh, the system, a settled team now. They they start from a solid base. What I mean is they have three at the back, I think, four in midfield uh, and one up front. And uh, they, can, they, can, uh, they can defend really, really well. 
um, and, and go from there. So, you know, I don't think it's going to be an easy match for England, but I do think uh, I've, I've always fancy England against Scotland because I think we've got better players. Listen, I've got one more I've got to ask you, Peter. 125 caps for England. I always want to know, do you actually get 125 caps do they arrive in the post? Do they hand it to you? And where are they? Because I've always Why aren't you wearing to... one? I know. <laughs> where are they now? You've got one there, but, but do you have 125? No, no, no. I, you, you, do, you get caps in the old days, and then sometimes at World Cups you get one cap with all the names on. But, ah. uh, you know, in that era, I, I used to put them in bin liners and put them in my, uh, in my loft because you didn't know where else to put them. Um, no. no, I mean, uh, over the years I've given... I've given them away and, uh, and, and you know, sort of um, let them go because memorabilia is uh, very big. And I think, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those situations where you don't want them hanging around the house for obvious reasons, you know. And it's very difficult just to shove them in a bank vault, you know. Peter, I think Gareth Southgate's got a big problem. Um, if England qualify for the Euro finals, do you play Jordan Henderson... Would you would you have Harry Maguire in front of you? Would you be confident with Harry Maguire in front of you? And I say that only as a out of concern, I suppose, as a Man United fan. But the, but the lad is not getting game time really. Yeah, I think um, it's a difficult one. I mean, obviously Gareth is known as a loyal manager, but I think when players are not playing regularly over a period of time, they they're bound to lose that that bit of edge, you know, and. Uh, I think if it stays the same, you know, I think it'd be very difficult, you know, to, to I think it'd be difficult to play Jordan in the same anyway. The level he's playing at is not obviously the level of the Premier League. I think require, you know, if he's not playing in the team regularly, I think it'd be difficult to, to play him at the end of the season in, um, in a big tournament like Interesting. that. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, score tonight? Uh, always... Always fancy England, so I'm not going to say Scotland are going to win, but uh, I'm going to say 2-0 uh, to England. I'm, but I never get it right anyway. So as long as we win, I'm not too bothered. So not the 5-0, not the 9-3, no. conservative 2-0. <laughs> I'd take it. I don't think north of the border they will, Peter. I think a 2-2 draw. Do you really? Unless Harry Kane's in real good form and then there's just no stopping. He's always on good form. Yeah. He'll be fine. Yeah. I'm with you, Peter. Yeah, there we go. I think we need to bounce back from the other day a little bit. It was a bit dull, as Eamon said. It was uh, one of those matches against Ukraine that, uh, you know, I think we, we weren't really at it. So I think the lads will be ready tonight. Well, okay. no friendlies in football, and no it certainly won't football. be one, will it? OK. Uh, Schultz, pleasure, absolute pleasure talking to you. Thanks for taking the time Lovely. today. Uh, we really appreciate nice that. Nice to speak to you both. OK, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Well, that Pleasure. gets us all excited for the big game. I know, game. I'm all revved up. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm going to have a kick around in the car park. Right, good, you're yeah. fancy coming around my house later. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, we might do that. Well, are you gonna, who are you going to support, though? Oh, don't Just ask winner. me that. Just the winner. Don't ask me that He's question. He's a glory hunter. <laughs> well, I, I think if you're Celtic, you've got to okay. stay with wow. the Celtic so team. Fair enough. Wow. All right. I so England, then. But I'm not one of these people that's anti-England, not at all. I because, know. I mean, if you support, yeah, yeah. you know, if you cheer these people, um, these players in the Premier League every week, I don't think you can then turn right and pretend you sort of can't stand England or whatever. But I think in this case, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see Scotland do Okay, that. fair I enough. That makes it even <laughs> Not on We're the fence. Never on the fence. We're not fallout <laughs> over that. Mm. 